10,000 years ago, when in any given human was born, you were probably born into a group of, of about 50 to 150 people. But the thing is that you stuck with that group for your entire life. Um, now people are born and then they kind of grow up with their family, but they're spending most of the time on their phone and whatnot. Um, the interesting part is that back then, 10,000 years ago, the reason why it was so beneficial to be a part of that group is because if you weren't in a group, it was so much less likely that you would survive, right? It was harder to you know, create shelter. It was harder to hunt. It was harder to fight off predators, anything of that sort. So it was actually just a survival tactic was right. to have a group that you would associate with. And so as a result, in order to, you know, in, in the same way that when you're very hungry, you can almost feel pain in your stomach as a result of our body telling ourselves, like, we need to be in a group to survive. You, we developed this like loneliness pain, this social pain that says, hey, you need to get back out and you need to socialize and, you know, find other people so that you can survive. And it's actually so bad that, you know, loneliness is worse for your body it's about two times worse for your body than being obese, and it's the equivalent of smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. Chronic loneliness, I should right, clarify. Right. But that's incredible, right? It's crazy. Um, and in the meantime, everybody's thinking, okay, well, you know, you know, you and I are in New York City. It has a metro population of about 20 million people. Right. How could anybody in New York City be lonely when there are so many people and we have so many ways to connect with people, right? You know, right. through the phone, Instagram, you can call somebody, whatever the case is, when in actuality, it's just that people get so buried in the newest season of Game of Thrones or the Instagram content that's on their feed from some model that lives in Miami that they've never even met before, right? right. And then in the meantime, they don't spend any time with the people around them. So then all of a sudden what you have is you have people that have like maybe two friends and of those two friends, they see them on a weekly basis if they're lucky. Yeah. And in turn, your body's just saying, hey, this isn't right. I'm used to being in a pack of 50 right. for my whole life. Um, because biologically, we're really not that much different from you know where we were 10,000 years ago. It's just not enough time on an evolutionary scale to really develop any other you know aspect to that loneliness or the social pain that we have. Right. Um, so I think, I think kind of a, an antidote to that can be finding a tribe. And sometimes we do that when we move into a new city mm -hmm. by just getting really involved with our company, mm -hmm. but there has to be some sort of separation there as well. Mm -hmm. Again, it's depth over width, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can have a hundred acquaintances mm -hmm. or you can have a few close friends and I'll mm -hmm. always take the few close friends over the acquaintances. The other thing is, so we have this kind of loneliness act epidemic, right? Mm -hmm. I think that it's important to be self-aware about who you are because there are some people that might be more comfortable with having a large group of friends. There mm -hmm. might be some people that are more comfortable kind of being more introverted. Mm -hmm. um, something that I've been more focused on is like, like tr looking at Myers-Briggs and trying to find out what my personality type is mm -hmm. and then kind of working back from there. Um, if anyone goes on 16personalities.com, check that out. That will freak you out of like how accurate it is, how accurate it is. Um, but at the end of the day though, we, we need this human connection outside of our phones and we have to have a healthy relationship with our phones. Um, I also think that we have to remove the stigma of like mental illness as well mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, you talk about first getting to New York and being lonely and, and, and I felt that too. It's weird, right? You're, you're in a subway car with like hundreds of people and you're walking around the city and you're like, why do I feel alone? Um, I think for some people it's like, if you move to New York and you're from Phoenix, like you should be talking to your parents a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Talking to your friends back home. Um, if you need to go see a therapist, go go do that. I think it's so important to remove the stigma of like you are in this alone. Um, it's okay to ask for help as well. 100%. Um, you know, 46% of people in the United States as a whole feel loneliness regularly. Right. So, you know, you have 330 million people in this country and roughly speaking 150 million are going to feel lonely regularly yet it's such this it's like a touchy taboo topic yeah, right. because nobody wants to say hey i'm lonely it almost a lot of the times it can come off petty like oh okay you're just looking for attention or right. you know it can come off just kind of awkward like oh, okay you're lonely like i get it you know whatever or you know and it can leave the person embarrassed so to say that is 
it's just very uncomfortable, but it's also because of the stigma that's around it, like you're saying, you know, um, loneliness can then, you know, kind of develop into depression. And then when you're depressed, like nobody wants to say, hey, I'm depressed, <laughs> right, right? right? So um, if you kind of eliminate that stigma and the taboo aspect of it, I think that you'd be in a much better place from a societal standpoint, because then all of a sudden it's like, cool, it's okay to say, hey, I'm lonely. Do you want to get coffee? Um, right. You know, maybe that's probably not the way that you would phrase it. Yeah, but, just um, coffee. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I would highly encourage anybody that's, feel you know, in a slump and feeling that way to, like, reach out to a coworker. Just say, hey, can we grab lunch? Or, you know, and it depends on the, you know, culture at your company. If everybody's kind of very heads down and it's very strict and suit and tie and whatever the case is, then, you know, try. There's apps as well, right? You know, you have things like Bumble and Tinder yeah. and whatever, and they have friend sections if that's what you're looking for, whatever the case is. Like, there are certainly ways to go around it. Um, but at the same time, you know, to speak to what you were saying, it also depends on who you are. Like some things are very uncomfortable for people where, you know, there, I have friends that would hate to go to a party with more than 10 people. Right. <laughs> that would just, you know, it would give them crazy anxiety. They wouldn't know who to talk to or what to talk about. And that's just not who they are yeah. to the contrary. Like, you know, reading a book with a friend or, you know, going and seeing a movie with two other people, that's where they're comfortable and that's where they're happy. So do what makes you happiest. Listen to yourself. You know, self-awareness is a big, big aspect of that.